Okay, and we are back. And hi, everybody. And uh, since I wasn't talking yesterday, I should introduce myself. So my name is Radovan Bast, calling in from Tromsø, Norway, uh, working at the University of Tromsø, doing research software engineering and supporting users and research groups in com computation and programming. And together with me is uh, Johan. I don't know if you want to say a sentence like after a commercial. I mean, there might be new people watching. Yes, so I'm Johan Helsvik, uh, working for, at uh, the PDC Center for High Performance Computing at KT8 in Stockholm. And we will now, in the next roughly 60 minutes, we will talk about data visualization with Matplotlib. And here on my screen, I will zoom in a bit more. I just want you to know where to find it in the material. So I will click here on data visualization with Matplotlib. We have seen some plotting in the previous wonderful lesson about pandas. Now we will do a little bit more. And plotting and data visualization is something that I think we all need to do for reports, for, for, for the thesis, for publications, for presentations. And so that's why we put it into schedule. And um, Python and Matplotlib, so the library that we will present, is, is a very good match for data visualization together with Jupyter. So is, of course, R and ggplot and, Mat and MATLAB. But I mean, this is a Python course. But the, uh, so the tools that we will show here, they are really, really good match for data visualization. And we will motivate, we will motivate why. So the, um, we have a couple of goals to achieve. So in the next 60 minutes, we will maybe not become experts of uh, MATLAB, but at least we want you to show what is possible. Uh, we will show you a couple of examples. Uh, the most important thing for me is that you are able, after this lesson, that you have a good starting point and that you are able to look for help, that to search, search for help and being able to adapt um, gallery examples and examples. Um, so I will show you more about that. Uh, one concept that is very important to us is the concept of reproducibility. And just to motivate this lesson and to motivate why we, why we talk about Matplotlib, I wanted to show you the sentence here from this wonderful book, which is linked, that data visualization needs to be automated. Figures should be auto-generated as part of a data analysis pipeline, and they should really come out ready to be sent to the printer. So at the end of this lesson, what we want to be able to do is that at the end of our Jupyter notebook is the, is the plot that we can then send in to the publication, or we can put in our thesis, or we can put in our presentation without, without manually post-processing it in a different program. And that is really important. I will emphasize that again later when we talk about customizing because manually tweaking images, it, it will really bite you when you need to regenerate 50 figures one day before the submission deadline, or you get additional data and you want to update the figures. And then it's, then it's nice if I can just rerun the whole pipeline and at the end of my Jupyter notebook are the updated figures. It's also really important when the person who originally created the figures left the group, and this happens. I mean, master students, PhD students, postdocs, they, they, they enter the group, they leave the research group. And sometimes all we have left is a JPEG of the plot. And how do you want to then adapt that? So here we want to show um, a more reproducible, flexible way. And there are a couple of libraries in, a couple of tools in Python exist. Here I list those that I know. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are more and more. We will focus on Matplotlib. And why are we starting with Matplotlib and not with any of the other tools? The reason is that Matplotlib is maybe the most popular one. It's 18 years old. It's maybe the most standard, the most used library. I think it's a good starting point. Um, there are other libraries that build on top of Matplotlib. So then it helps to know Matplotlib a little bit. Those of you who who also 
write code in MATLAB will feel probably feel a bit familiar because matplotlib actually comes from MATLAB. I wouldn't be surprised if the mat in matplotlib actually has something to do with MATLAB. And even if you choose another library and it's, it's sometimes a personal preference, it can be helpful. Also, the chances are high that you may need to adapt a matplotlib of, of your colleague. And it can be for adapting some of the libraries, exam, for example, Seaborn, it can be good to know how Matplotlib works. So let's, let's maybe get started. Um, Johanna, are you, how about you take the screen from me and then we try it out, we get uh, together, we build up um, a plot and to get started with Matplotlib. And then later we will discuss how we can tweak it and customize it and adapt it to our liking. Yes, uh, thanks, Radovan. I will take the screen. And uh, I can just first uh, emphasize really what, what Radovan said, that I, I mean, the importance of, of this with uh, being able to reproduce your figures and also produce figures in different of different kinds in an efficient manner is very important. So a common thing is that if you will make a figure for let's say one format that could be for a slide when you give a presentation, and then the same material, the same data is going to is going to end up in a manuscript. And then you need to have perhaps another aspect ratio of the figure and you might to need to have a different sizes of, of fonts and everything. And then it's very convenient and efficient when you have things scriptable. So what we'll do now is to create our first plot. So we'll start here from, from this code snippet here. So I will now move this window and go to a, a Jupyter notebook, so copy the code and paste it here. And we execute it right away. And I scroll down and display what we get. And uh, just a quick question, do we, do we expect now, so should people now do it at the same time? Should they wait a little bit? Um, yes. Um, so I suggest now that, that you just follow along and then you will actually uh, continue to work with the same code snippet and use that in, in the first exercise to extend this, this example. Yes, so at this moment, it's good to just watch. And then in a moment, we will go into exercise and then, then you can try this out as well. So the result here is a rather standard two-dimensional plot where we have these yellow um, dots indicating a data set. So I now scroll back up to the code and I will highlight what the different lines of code are, are doing. So the first statement here is um, st specifying that map.lib will um, um, inline the figure into the, the notebook itself. Here we import map.lib and by convention we do this as PLT. We have uh, an example data set here. It's uh, X coordinates. We have uh, Y coordinates. And this statement here is interesting. So you can see that you have two handles here. So figure is an object for the figure window. So had it run Python in the terminal, a standalone window would have been opened. And then fig is the handle we have on this window. X, on the other hand, it's an object for the canvas in which the graphics are drawn. So here is the line of code that is doing the actual plotting. The data is not continuous, so we use a scatter plot with arguments the X data, the Y data, and then we specify also the color. We, in order to um, get some labeling up, we have statements here to specify the label of the x-axis, the y-axis, and then some title. 
So for so these are for the moment just yes, placeholders, and then in the exercise you, you will you will adopt these to, to so to say real content. So finally, uh, in order to save the figure, one can use the statement with the figure handle and then save fig, and you save to, to uh, um, you save a file of an appropriate file format. So this can then be to a PNG format, which is a good choice if you will have the figure coming up on a web page. If you want to retain full information in the plot, then it can be appropriate to, to save the file in vector format, as for instance, the EPS format. So we are now coming to the first exercise. Yeah, I'm also watching here ACMD, but I think the questions are getting answered. I think nothing we need to really, really raise here, but we can say that, yeah, you can choose different output formats. You can also you can then adapt the resolution of the of the figure. So this is, these are things that can be can be changed, and you can also try that out later in the exercise session. Yeah, it is a good point. Uh, and uh, indeed, so, so very often you, you might have that you have generated in some resolution and then you would like at a later instance to have the figure in another resolution. And then it's very convenient when you can do that by changing perhaps only one or two lines of code. So what you will do in the first exercise for which you will have 15 minutes is to extend the figure with an additional data set and you will then also use different colors so that we can separate the data. And when we have multiple data sets, then it's also good to specify what they are by uh, introducing a legend. So let's see, Radovan, is there something more to say for the exercise? Yeah, so just want to say that the, the goal of this first exercise it may, be, it may be really simple for those who have already used Matplotlib, but the goal here is really to, to see something in your notebook. And then there's also a solution that you can unroll. So there is one suggested solution how, so you can also have a, have a look there, but the goal is then that you can, well, adapt the, try to play a little bit, adapt the labels or add a label for the, for the data. And the, after the 15 minutes, you should be able to see what we see here in this in this plot. And feel free to, of course, ask questions. Those of you who are in Zoom rooms, the helpers who are there, ask on HackMD. Some of these, especially the way we do the data to scaled, this might be a new thing for some of you. So feel free to ask about what is, what is happening there. And um, so you will have 15 minutes time. And after, when we come back, we will then answer questions. We will discuss some of this. And later, then we will go in and try to learn how to tweak, customize, improve uh, our plots. So uh, welcome back, everyone, after the exercise. So hope you came far with it. And uh, we will highlight a few things that we, we caught on the HackMD. So you've got the question here. I'm always confused with fig and X. Both things allow labels. And th th that's a very important question. So we will get to that in a minute. And then I think another one, there was one thing that you wanted to highlight. Yeah, I also wanted to thank for the really, really good questions and comments. There was also one about why this one. Yes. Why couldn't we just do data two underscore Y underscore scaled? Why couldn't we just multiply? And that's a very good question. And here I wanted to say that something that is can be a little bit confusing in the, is that in Python, there are many ways to collect numbers into our collection. There are lists, there are NumPy arrays, there are pandas data frames, and they can do different things. So we could have done this if we had used a NumPy array that we have seen yesterday. And maybe, maybe we should have used that in this exercise, but I, 
I was not sure what would be sort of less confusing. In the exercise, we this is not an NPy array, but it's a Python list. And with a Python list, we cannot do this so compactly. So that's why. But it's a very good question. Yeah, thank you, Radama. So um, I'll, I'll talk now about this with interfaces. So um, Matplotlib has uh, two interfaces. So one is the more object-oriented uh, one. And we already saw it in the exercise. So fig and x are objects that can be handled separately. And this is convenient whenever we have two or more figures in the same notebook or script. So you would then have fig one, fig two, and so forth. And then you can uh, access them independently of each other. The more traditional thing would be the PyPlot interface. Uh, we had PLT is handled to uh, set the global settings. So something which is a very common situation is that you will uh, look for templates for your plots on the internet and, and you will find code snippets that you will uh, start out from and, and uh, reuse. And uh, what you will then encounter is that you will see that sometimes you will find code snippets which are using the fig and x objects. And sometimes you will find code material which is using the pyplot interface. So it's, it's good to be prepared on, on, on seeing that. And for the longest time, I really didn't know that there are two ways of running MATLAB. Also, although I'm using MATLAB since many years, actually every time I'm looking up something, and I was surprised that every time I search something on Stack Overflow, it always looked a little bit different than I remembered this from last time. And then I think like a year ago or two years ago, I found out that, well, there are two different ways of doing it. So here the goal is just that you know there are two different ways of doing it. They have pros and cons, and I think it can help to remove some confusion. And again, rem remember reminding what Johan said about fig and x, which was, I think, really good way of picturing it. So the, it's, I, I like imagining fig as the, the, board, the, the frame. And the frame can have a size, and I can resize it, and I can, I can save it. And it's, it's useful to imagine the x as the, the canvas. So these are the axes and the ticks and the data points, and this is what we really plot. And each of them carry different functions, and I don't remember all of them. So that's hopefully useful. Yes. So yes, as a concluding remark here, so, so our recommendation is that when you write uh, new code from scratch, that you go for the object-oriented interface, as it is, has more flexibility. More flexibility and less side effects. Yes. So now I think um, we are coming to styling and customization. And then I think, Radovan, it, it's that you can take the screen. I'm working on it. So taking the screen in a second and now sharing. And I have here the lesson open. And in the background, I, I already have a Jupyter notebook ready to go. So we will do more Jupytering. And now we talk about styling and customizing plots. And this is something that we also often need to do for publications. So we, we have this now, so far we have created this rough plot, but maybe we need to change the font size or we need to change the aspect ratio, or we want to have a different styling here. And now we might be, we may be tempted to go in and op open it up in a different program and maybe, um, you know, change the font sort of manually in a different code every plot, but I think it's good to resist this temptation. It's good to automate it. Let, let the Jupyter notebook do all the customization because then again, reminding we, if we need to then regenerate all these 50 figures, once we get additional data, it's, it's just changing your line and everything will come out automatically. And this is also nice for all the other community that will try to reproduce my visualization. And then we can attach the visualization to the publication as supporting information. And we will come back to this, in fact, on Thursday, where we take it a step further and we will discuss our binder, which is a wonderful 
wonderful service. So let's talk about customization. Um, we can, in Matplotlib, you can adapt, you can adjust any, everything, really absolutely everything. I don't remember how, every time I have to search for it. But what, we, what can be really useful to know is how, how are these things even called? So if I want to search for something, how, how is this called? And I find this really useful, this parts of a figure. I'll just open it up here. So here I can find out how, how are these things called? Okay, so this is called the x-axis label and this is the minor tick label. Then I know what to search for. So this is useful. The other resource that I find really useful are these cheat sheets. They are a collection of really, really nice Matplotlib cheat sheets for beginners, for intermediates. You can print them out. And I, these I find very, very, very helpful. Back to customization. Oh yeah, one more thing I wanted to mention is that you can, there are also style sheets in Mat Matplotlib. Let's open it up. So you can really change the overall look. Uh, I know this is a little bit tiny. So if you if you really like the ggplot look. So there are many styles here to choose from. And here's an example how you could how you could change the overall style. So this is really important. We will we will practice that. But we have here a uh, we have a we have a number of possible exercises. I wanted to walk you through them and you will be able to choose the one that is most interesting for you and most relevant for your work. So let me walk you through the three exercises. And you will have then 15 minutes and you can choose one of the three. If, like one suggestion is, uh, well, if you, if you manage to finish one, one earlier, you can of course start with the second one. So let me show you what they are about. Exercise number one is that, and this connects a bit to, to the pandas lecture earlier today and yesterday, we will read, we will read some data from, from a web resource and we will try to plot it. And if you, and here's a starting point, so you can then take, this as a starting point. And what, what we plot here in this exercise is um, on the x-axis, we have GDP per inhabitant. So in other words, how wealthy is a country? And all these dots are countries, different countries. And this is from the GapMinder data set. And on the y-axis, we see like what is the life expectancy. And then a sad fact is that the countries that are more wealthy, the people live longer and vice versa. And here we realize that, well, the the linear axis is maybe not, not the most appropriate. It would be maybe more appropriate to take a log axis. So your goal is to take these parts as a figure as a starting point, do a bit of web search, and your goal is to adapt this figure from a linear axis to log axis. An additional question that you can explore, what does this, what does this alpha zero five do here? So a little bit of exploration. Exercise two, and of course uh, you can unroll this and you find one possible solution. Exercise two is, um, it's good to know that uh, creating a plot for a Zoom presentation is a different thing than creating a plot for a publication which goes to, to print. Because in a Zoom presentation, you have the whole screen. In a publication, we sometimes only have a column. So the goal of this exercise is to take a starting point but to, we want to increase the font size. We want to increase the tick sizes so that it still looks readable if I print it out on, on paper. That's something I actually also recommend to do before publishing to really print it out in the size that it will appear and have a look, is this still understandable? Is this still readable? So you can try that. Exercise three, I think it's a very nice ex exercise. 15 minutes may not be enough time, but I think I really encourage you to go through this. One of, you know, during a rainy afternoon is, this is something I often do. I don't start from scratch. 
I actually, if I want to do a plot, I open up one of these galleries, for instance, the map plot gallery, and I browse it until I find a plot that looks similar to what I have in mind. For instance, this one. And then the next step I do is I try to run it as it is, and I hope I get the same result as the people who created it. So that's the second step. The third step is try to find out where in this example is the data. And the data here probably will be this. Um, so try to find out where is the data. The data is here. And then try to modify the data. Try to replace it with your own data. So try to reproduce it. Try to find out where is the data defined. In which format is it? Is it a, is it a NumPy array? Is it a list? Is it a two-dimensional list? Try to modify the data. And then if you have the time, try to feed it different simplified data. And this will be really the key to adapting this example to your project. So that's something I do very often. Then I want to plot my data. And then, then the next step is, if this looks good, to customize and tweak. And here is an example exploration. So does that sound fine? So again, we will have 15 minutes. You can choose one, two, or three. If you work in groups, maybe it can be good to choose one, one two, or three as a group. Um, when, when we come back from the exercise, we will take, we will take a break. And after the break, I will, I will maybe go through one of these together. Maybe, maybe actually the ex example three that we really try to explore this together. And then we will summarize. Did I miss, miss anything? I think you, you got it all, uh, Radovan. I think uh, one comment I could make is this that we have all of these um, um, snippets of code and uh, it could be that, I mean, when you write all of this plotting code that it ends up a little bit scattered here and there, you have it perhaps shared between different projects. But one thing which is a good thing to strive for is to, um, to uh, put these, snippets of code that you're using for the, for the plotting into, for instance, the main repository of code you have for doing some numerical calculation. So then you have, you have it all in one place. So that can be useful for generating figures for results and also for documentation of the code and for tutorial material. And that's a great point too. And, and that's the nice thing about the Jupyter Notebook is that we have the chance to have the data and the plotting and the figures, but also our thinking can be all in one place because we can document it. And then if I open it up again in one year later, I don't have to look for where was the data again on which external hard drive was it. It's all in one place. And you can also use the time in the exercise to actually discuss some horror stories about customization late, late minute. I think we all have this, we have all these, these stories. So we will give you 15 minutes. We will be back one minute. Well, we will be back at the full hour. Then we go into break. And after the break, we go through one of these ex exercise together. Yeah, so in fact, we will not meet at 12. Uh, so simply at 12, you go for the break. And then we will meet again 10 past. 10 past the hour. Sounds great. Enjoy the exercise. Looking forward to discuss it with you after the break. So welcome back everyone after the break. So we, I also hope that you have been working uh, with progress with exercise one, two, and three. So yes, I would like to point out that uh, there, there are good questions in HackMD and we will answer them asynchronously and uh, get back and perhaps highlight a few of them tomorrow. So now I know that some of you have been working on exercise one and two and uh, exercise where you have template solutions. Um, for exercise three, it's open-ended where you could have, go in different directions and 
we have one worked example with the, the Seaborn library. And uh, is there perhaps an example exploration that we have with um, one of the other libraries, uh, rather one? Yes, so we'll show now the remaining, like we have maybe seven, seven, eight minutes left. We could try together because the exercise three is maybe the most interesting one, but probably takes more than 15 minutes. But again, I really invite you to try it out. And what we could do now just for added difficulty is that we take one, let's take one example out of Matplotlib and we, we try to adapt it a little bit and try to make sense of it. So this is how I often start. I go into, into the gallery and what I will do now, let's take, let's take this one here as an example. It shows some scores for men and women. I don't really know. But first, first thing I will, we will do is I will copy that into my notebook and I will try to run it. I just need to make that more readable. So that's how I often start. Copy paste and I will run it shift enter. And I'm pretty happy here because I get the same result. That's already a really good step. Yes. And now the second step, before I go into any details, I, I try to make sense of the data. And the data seems to be here. So there are labels. Now let's simplify that a little bit. Now maybe, maybe I just want to have two, two values plotted. So there are five, five things in a list and I see five bars. So what happens if I remove three of them? Will that, what will happen? Probably it will still work. So, so what are these uh, data types that you have there? So these are lists, Python list. Yeah, yeah Python list, yes. A list of integers here. Here there is a list of strings. So these are not NumPy arrays. One could also use NumPy arrays. And I run this again and I have now two columns and I could even, probably I could modify the width. And now, Let's just have a little bit more fun here. So I will call this day one and day two. And I saw that the labels changed. And instead of scores, where is scores? I want to change this thing. It's probably that one. I don't know, number of viewers. And instead of gender, let's look at, I don't know, viewers by tool and instead of men and women let's imagine we we are interested in how many people watch on twitch via later i don't know youtube as we run and it's still kind of working and now i i can imagine that this is probably the these are the bars and these will be the kind of error dv standard deviations and I don't know how many viewers we, like yesterday was probably, and I, now it's also a bit confusing because we have, mm. this is not yeah. men and women, we could rename these. We have a number for today. So currently we have 195 viewers on Twitch. So let's call this Twitch. 195. Yeah. And, and I think more, I don't know, 400. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in, yes, all, the, all that order. Yes. Yeah. And now I change this. I will run it. It will not work because it will. Oh, how come it works? Why does it work? <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, because, well, what? I don't understand why this code is working <laughs> because. So, <laughs> I was hoping that I should need also change this, but yeah. oh, but you you had this arrays in, in memory perhaps. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Good point. Well, actually, let me go back because I should. One thing I should really do. Was it men? That's a very good thing. Let me show that before I finish this. This is very very good. One thing I should really do is before I save the notebook, because I think actually everything is good here, it works. 
what I should do is I like to rerun all cells. You can even restart the kernel and rerun all cells. Let's try that because then it should really break. It will restart the whole thing and run the whole thing from top to bottom. Let's see. Restart, yes. And now we get the error. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Because now it it just doesn't find man means is undefined because I changed that. So that was really good demo demo effect. Before saving a notebook, before sharing it with other people, really good to restart, rerun all cells from top to bottom because then this is the first thing that the next person will do. Good. I will not go more into details here. Um, but back to the lesson. Just to summarize, we have like three more minutes left. I find this really useful to do go through. Take an example that is close to what you work on right now. Also, you can try any of these other libraries. They are all great with Jupyter. Some of them are not part of Anaconda. So some of them you need an extra installation step. But also have a look at Seaborn. Just to quick peek here at the gallery, also very nice library, which builds on top of Matplotlib. And for Seaborn, we do have uh, an example exploration that yes. we can open in the lesson. So you could go through that. And that will work also in your, in your Anaconda. So that's what I often do. I take something existing. I want to tweak the data. If it looks somehow all right, then I improve the looks and ready to publish. So let's summarize here the session. It was very quick, and we only could give you some starting points. Hopefully, it was useful. Uh, some points that I would, again, like to repeat is automation is our friend. There will be the day when we are really happy that we have everything in notebook and don't have to redo all the figures by hand. And all of them will regenerate in two minutes. Um, as Johan mentioned, keep the data and the, the thinking process and the plotting and the figures all in one place, if you can. Sometimes you cannot. Example when you cannot is when the data is sensitive. Then it has to be in a different place. Or if the data is gigantic, then it also needs to be in a different place. But then we can fetch it with, with pandas, for instance. And on, on Thursday, we will take this even a step further because we will show how to create a binder instance from our notebook. And then we can share visualization with others and they can re reuse it and reproduce it. And they don't even have to have Jupyter and Matplotlib on the computer. All they need is a browser. So this will be very nice and we come back to that on Thursday. What did I forget to say? I could perhaps highlight one uh, thing, uh, namely this with the uh, color scales. And uh, as you can read down here, an important aspect is this, that uh, some people are perhaps uh, colorblind. And it's a, in the end, it's a very good thing to uh, have a color scale that works also if you project it to a black and white color scale. And uh, this is also important for the sake of printing, because sometimes you, you print things in, in black and white, and then it's good if the color scale is working from the beginning. Yes, and further up in the lesson, we have some uh, links to resources that actually give you a good color uh, palette, which is adapted to these different color vision deficiencies. Great point. Thanks so much for watching and for listening and for the questions. And we, we will catch up with the questions. And I will, we will hand over to, to Simo.